I personally don't think I've ever heard a bad word spoken about New Zealand. Sometimes regarded as being one of the most beautiful countries in the world, this isolated nation is a very desirable place to visit, live and retire. I was lucky enough to travel there in 2020, but then something called COVID-19 decided to pop up and ruin all of my plans. So in this video, we've got 15 reasons why we think New Zealand is the best country in the world because my name is Sam and you're watching The Geography Bible. All right, so let's kick off this video with number 15, its natural beauty. New Zealand is undoubtedly one of the most beautiful picturesque countries in the world. From Mount Cook to Milford Sound to Hobbiton, New Zealand is a very mountainous, rugged country. So it offers some of the most stunning, picturesque views you will see on Earth. With it being a relatively narrow island, you are also never too far away from the ocean. Number 14 its climate. New Zealand has a largely temperate climate. While the far north has subtropical weather during summer, inland alpine areas of the South Island can be as cold as minus 10 degrees Celsius in winter. Most of the country lies close to the coast, which means mild temperatures, moderate rainfall and abundant sunshine, pretty much the perfect climate. Not too hot, but not too cold. Apart from earthquakes and the odd cyclone, New Zealand does not experience Experience much life-threatening extreme weather. Number 13. Its low population and density. At just 5.1 million, New Zealand is a very small country. What's more, around a third of New Zealand lives in its biggest city, Auckland. To put this in perspective, there are about 75 cities in the world that are more populated than the entirety of New Zealand. New Zealand has a population density of around 18 people per kilometre squared, making it one of the least densely populated countries in the world. This low population and density means less congestion, less traffic and a general chilled vibe. Which of course isn't everyone's cup of tea, as some people do prefer the hustle and bustle of big cities. Number 12. Its history and culture. Even though New Zealand is a relatively new country in terms of the year that it was discovered, it is packed full of history. New Zealanders take huge pride in their culture and the Maori people, along with their traditions, are well respected. Maori were the first to arrive in New Zealand, journeying in canoes from Hawaii about 1,000 years ago. A Dutchman, Abel Tasman, was the first European to sight the country, but it was the British who made New Zealand part of their empire. You'll find amazing Maori historic sites across New Zealand, as well as beautiful colonial era buildings dotted throughout the country. Number 11. Hobbiton and Lord of the Rings. Regardless if you are a Lord of the Rings fan or not, the Hobbit set and the surrounding rolling hills are absolutely stunning. It was one of my childhood dreams to visit Hobbiton, and finally in 2020, I got to visit, and I wasn't disappointed. It was the most beautiful day, not a cloud in the sky and 20 degrees Celsius weather. The movie set is New Zealand's third largest tourist attraction, attracting approximately 17% of international visitors and estimated to bring in around $78 million to the area annually. Take this with a pinch of salt, but I was told during my tour that the director of Lord of the Rings, Peter Jackson, receives 50% of all of the revenue, meaning he earns a cool $39 million or so every year. Number 10. It's isolation. New Zealand's isolation from the west of the world does have economic drawbacks. For example, when I was there, I noticed the price of some groceries is astronomical compared to what it is in the UK and Europe. Quite simply, if New Zealand does not grow a certain produce, it may have to import it from a place that is tens of thousands of kilometres away. Its isolation, however, does work in its favour politically. Apart from Australia, who is like its older big brother, New Zealand doesn't really have any neighbours. And any neighbours it does have, like Fiji, are not world superpowers. Compare this to the likes of India, who have the nuclear superpowers of Russia, China and Pakistan on their doorstep. Number 9. It's Beaches when you think of New Zealand, you usually think of huge, picturesque mountain ranges and rolling green hills. But what most people don't realise is that New Zealand has some of the world's most pristine and beautiful beaches. New Zealand is actually home to 90 Mile Beach. However, the name is actually completely wrong. It's actually only 55 miles. Still, 
an incredible distance. With New Zealand being such a small country population-wise, you'll often find completely deserted beaches that you can have all to yourself. Number 8 most livable cities. In 2021, two of the top 10 most livable cities on earth were in New Zealand. Wellington, which came in fourth place, and Auckland, which ranked as the most livable city on earth. To be a country of this size and feature two of your cities in the top 10 is an almighty achievement. Being a livable city pretty much means that it is a nice place to live. Low crime, clean environment, and job opportunities are usually the main factors to contribute to a livable city. It must be noted, however, that when the 2021 rankings were released, New Zealand at the time was one of the only countries to pretty much stomp out COVID-19, meaning its citizens lived a mostly lockdown free life. Now, of course, since then, things have changed. Number seven, low corruption. New Zealand is one of the least corrupt nations on earth. In fact, it usually battles Denmark and other Nordic countries for the top rankings in the world. In 2021, New Zealand ranked as the equal least corrupt country in the world, alongside Finland and Denmark. As mentioned earlier, New Zealand doesn't really have any enemies, and because it isn't a nuclear power, has a relatively small economy and population, it rarely finds itself getting involved with foreign affairs. Number six. A relatively small country that offers everything. Although New Zealand is rather remote and small, it offers a wide variety of activities that its residents and tourists love. From gorgeous beaches and surfing, to skiing, whale watching, mountain climbing and wine tasting. As mentioned earlier, this country offers a range of different climates and landscapes. So you don't actually ever have to leave the country as most things are already on your doorstep. Number five, Queenstown. Often described as the adventure capital of the world, not only does it offer activities for thrill seekers such as skiing, bungee jumping and skydiving, it is also one of the coolest and most beautiful looking cities in the world. Queenstown sits on the shore of Lake Wakatipu among dramatic alpine ranges a popular holiday and backpacking spot for any time of the year. Queenstown is renowned for its four distinctive seasons. Winter brings crisp blue sky days with snow perfect for skiing. Spring retains the snow but blooms into longer, warmer days. Summer offers sunshine and long twilights, and autumn a burst of brilliant red, orange and gold. Number four, its social purpose. New Zealand ranks third in the world when it comes to social purpose. Now, what exactly is social purpose? Well, it's the country's attitude and actions towards a variety of social attributes, such as animal rights, human rights, the environment, commitments to climate change, gender and racial equality, and many more. For this reason, New Zealand is a very progressive, healthy place to live. Now, of course, this doesn't mean it's perfect, but ranking third in the world means it is one of the best countries in the world for its social purpose performance. Number three, it's road trips. New Zealand is a country built for epic road trips. I can personally vouch for this as I did a road trip through the country in 2020. Unfortunately, a global pandemic decided to pop up which ended up ruining most of my plans. Low amounts of traffic outside the major cities alongside some of the most breathtaking views you will ever see results in an absolutely stunning road trip adventure. Being an isolated country with low population means there is less light pollution too, so the night sky makes things even more epic. To drive from the North Island to the South Island, you must take a three hour ferry from the capital Wellington across to Picton, which is a little pricey, but admittedly it is extremely fun. You can sip on a glass of wine as you float past the incredible fjords. Number two, it's chilled, laid back vibe. It's isolation, low levels of corruption and crime, low population and density, alongside a society that is friendly, open-minded and welcoming, means that New Zealand is an extremely safe, chilled place to live, work and study. If you're looking for a busy city or country with a booming economy and that hustle and bustle vibe, then New Zealand probably isn't your best bet. You might be better off living in a big city in Australia. And finally, number one, the best country to survive a global collapse. New Zealand is often voted as being one of, if not the best country in the world to survive a global collapse in society. Its rapid response to the pandemic and ability to completely seal itself off from the rest of the world 
has reassured its citizens that if a society was to collapse, let's say an even deadlier pandemic or a nuclear holocaust, then New Zealand would be a safe place to be. Again, with its isolation and political stability, there are very few countries that pose a threat to New Zealand. If a nuclear war was to break out, there is a very slim chance that New Zealand would be targeted. Its mountainous, rugged terrain alongside being an island would also pretty much make a land invasion impossible to win. Now, of course, New Zealand isn't perfect. It does have many issues of its own. For one, the country is tucked away in the corner of the world. It's a country that does require some planning to visit, and flights aren't cheap there. Round trips from the US or Europe are almost always over $1,000 and the journey takes over 23 hours. And even when you arrive, the country itself is far from being budget friendly. It is one of the most expensive countries in the world to travel and live in. So what are your thoughts on New Zealand? Would you live there? Let us know in the comments. As always, thank you for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already, it is completely free. And you can always unsubscribe at any time. Thanks again for watching and we will see you very soon in the next video.